Hello, thank you for coming back to our seventh episode. Seventh podcast episode. We're going to look into sovereign citizens and are they a threat to our judicial system and our democracy and what you can do about it if you're involved with them. How can you get out of this uh, without too big of a hit? But first, what I'd like to do is at least explain why I believe what I do and what are my rights to come up with it. Unfortunately, I've got to be a little tiny bit anonymous. So this is Judge Axon Fleet. And I am a former Superior Court judge of a state that probably isn't yours. But... What we're going to be getting into is I want to make sure that anybody who is considering getting involved with the sovereign citizen movement, which is now it looks like it's almost 37 years old, it's important that you know that they're still batting average of zero out of close, now now approaching 2,000, Cases they've tried to win in different courts with different people. They have not won any on the merits, even though we did see a case, uh, if we were watching the other day, a lot, well, I think it was three Fridays ago, of a gentleman who walked out of court, a winner, a sovereign citizen, but he walked out because the police officer had checked the box on a form. that These are given to the police when they come in. And there's a box if the if the officer says or claims that he doesn't have any recollection of the event, and we're going to get into why that's important to your strategy, how to maximize the chance of winning on that. If the officer writes down, I can't remember this incident, then the judge or the clerk, depending on the courtroom, dismisses it before the court gets to its daily business of, well, let's start hearing cases. It's just an automatic, okay, you're out of here, so that the officer can, of course, get back to stopping crimes, and so that you can get out, get back on the road, and go do what you were doing. And we saw that about three weeks ago for a guy who mistakenly thought that he had won the case because he had done all of his sovereign citizen tactics, antics. And I had no way of texting him and letting him know, no, sir, you you're, you would have won the same exact victory had you not been a sovereign citizen or claimed to have been or tried to have been or claimed not to have been and tried to have been. You would have won anyway because the officer dismissed the case based on something having nothing to do with sovereign citizenry. It had to do with the officer just didn't remember your traffic stop from another traffic stop. And sometimes when I talk to the officers afterwards, and yes, I have many times sat in the judge chambers, which I didn't have my own chambers because I was a part-time judge, not a full-time judge. I should have thrown that in earlier. Um... The point is, they, many times they can they say, well, I, I did remember some of it, but the important things I didn't remember were, and I've had officers tell me they didn't remember if they immediately identified themselves when they walked up to the car, or that they say they couldn't remember if they had indicated to the driver what vehicle offense they had pulled him over for. They'd say, well, I, I think it was, and, but if... If they're caught they, and they can't actually say for a fact they remember it, they don't want to get into a perjury situation and they just check the box on the form. Uh, I have been told they do get in trouble when they get back to work. Now, this was by a highway patrol officer and he was in visiting. We were all sitting around and he told me that they do get questioned back at work about why did you dismiss the case. But this brings us up to now a really important issue for you. What is the best way 
conduct-wise to get your case dismissed, which I'm hoping is your goal. If your goal is something else, I'm the wrong person to listen to. So if you want to get your case, if you want to maximize the odds of your case being dismissed and you walking away without any sort of points on your record from the stop, one of the things you always want to do is not leave the officer with a clear recollection of what occurred at the stop. That is just one of the best strategies. It costs you nothing. You are actually being rewarded for putting out less effort, for doing less things. And so I always advise non-sovereign citizen clients. And now I'm advising you if you're a potential. These are used to be. I'm now I'm retired. I don't have clients anymore. If you are either a member or considering sovereign citizenry, one of the best tactics would be just shut up. Only answer what the officer asks you and do not give an answer that will alert him to the fact that you are intent on causing trouble. I'd like to avoid the issue now of whether your intention is to actually cause trouble. I still have not figured out why your instructions that you get say, keep repeating, hey, I, you know, I'm not trying to cause any trouble here. No, no case is ever won doing that. That's never helped anyone in any case. You're, you're, when you get to court, as long as there is video of the stop, and of course there's video of every stop we're talking about here, or otherwise I wouldn't have known about it. So if there's video of the stop, the fact that you have refused the officer to tender your license doesn't matter how many times you raise your hands and say, sir, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not trying to cause a problem. I'm just trying. And in fact, it shows you to be a complete phony because everyone knows how hard you're going to be refusing to be in any way cooperative, even to the point of refusing to be extricated from your car. So to say, to stick up your hands or to pretend to be friendly and say, look, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just trying to be friendly and to be let go and without any charges and be allowed to just drive away from the crime I'm committing and to be allowed to just keep committing it as I drive on down the road, uh, endangering the other drivers because I don't have insurance to cover them if I hurt them. Well... Your, your self-congratulatory evaluation of your own motivation is a complete waste of time and, and makes you look very foolish. And I do mean that. It makes you look foolish. What would you, what would you do way better? What would do you way better would be tender the license immediately. And remember, in the other episode, let's, let's backtrack, we've gone over, there is no excuse to not tender the license. So any treatise, any any attack plan that says, well, instead of tendering the license, ask it. No, there's no right to ask him or her anything. Well, you have a right to know. Yeah, you have a right to know does not mean you have a right to disobey a lawful order. It's about as stupid as if the officer see you have a gun in your hand or it looks like a gun and they pull a gun on you and you they're now it's now rising up and pointing at your head for you to say, what gives you the right to point a weapon at me? Do you have your training? Is your training current? Yeah, you'll end up with, with lead in between your eyeball socket and your uh, the back of your skull. Don't do that. Don't be dumb. So to get back to the traffic stop, what can you do? Make yourself as unmemorable as possible. And by doing that, that just means don't do anything. I know I said this uh, five minutes ago. Don't do anything that makes you memorable to them. Now, I have, I, I, when, when I actually taught a couple of classes to people about 
you, you, who, to drivers who had to make absolute certain they did not get another ticket or they'd lose their job, I'd tell them you want to make sure to have nothing on your clothes that makes you memorable, which means for sure no slogans, and you don't want to have any anti-cop slogans on your clothes or in your car. And you don't want to have any kind of writing within the car that would be memorable, even a funny joke. Don't do anything to make you memorable. You want him to not remember the stop or at least to not remember details of the stop and that greatly increases your chances of walking on the case. So, with that being down, let's move on to next topic.